film and television, different accents and dialects are used to depict a character's nationality, to perhaps portray a certain social stereotype, or even to give a dimension to the character's demeanour. But how does one actually take on board a different accent or a dialect? Well, this is usually where a voice and dialect coach comes into play. And today we are meeting with voice and dialect superstar, Jenny Kent. Now, Jenny Kent has been teaching and coaching all throughout Australia and beyond, including a few of our very own homegrown stars like Anthony LaPaglia, Shane Jacobson and Margot Robbie, just to name a few. So with that, let's go learn the art of language with Jenny Kent. Well, Jenny, thank you for joining us here on Bite Size. What, in your opinion, has been the most challenging aspect in teaching a certain dialect to a client? Uh, sometimes it's time. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're given an hour to teach a, a lot of dialogue in a <laughs> difficult accent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's that you have to teach a group of people at one time. So mm -hmm. you don't get that one-on-one -on -one time because everyone might be doing different things with their voices or with their accents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it might be that they can't hear the sounds as well, but they're more visual. So that, that just takes a little bit longer to say, if, you, if you're not sure how that sounds, it looks like this. So if I draw a double O there, does that make more sense? And for some people, they say, aha, now I see that I can do that. So it's, yeah. it's just finding out how someone learns. But usually the most difficult thing is just do we have enough time? to get all of that information across. Which is when, of course, when you are saying earlier, practicing on your own and listening to the accent yes. itself comes in really handy. Yes, the more you can do, the better. Yeah. 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 Do you feel that accents are diversifying over time now that, as a society, we're kind of more multicultural? Absolutely. Yeah. Accents are constantly changing. There's mm -hmm. some fascinating linguistic studies coming out now where, you know, we get really interesting snapshots of teenagers and some of the sounds that they're coming up with. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just that we are, there are multicultural pockets everywhere and of course that influences sound. So yes, it, it is and I think it's happening all over the world as well. Absolutely. So the voice itself is an instrument which sometimes we take for granted and along the way we can do some damage to it if we can't use it appropriately. If, for example, an actor is doing a performance where they require quite heightened emotions like sobbing or anger or things like that, what are some ways they can avoid actually damaging the voice itself? Absolutely. And I think it, it is also just a case of knowing how to do it. So mm -hmm. you can achieve that effect without necessarily having that vocal force or damaging the faults. So often it's about using breath or making sure that you can relax your body in a, to, to get a sound that you want without tensing everything up. Because mm. usually when we have lots and lots of tension and we continue to use that, the voice gets tired and sore. Right. So there's, there's always techniques and they usually do come down to the way, for that sort of thing anyway, mm -hmm. the way that we breathe. Um, oh. And so you can suggest something with physicality but use your voice in a healthier way to give it, you know, a little bit more of a long-lasting wow. um, effect. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So in relation to actually sourcing a voice and dialect coach like, like yourself, for example, at what stage does a dialect coach come into the process of, of a film itself? Yeah. Um, does a director source you from the get-go? Do you come a little bit later on? When do you kind of come into play? That's an interesting question. So I find it's at all sorts of stages of a project. Mm -hmm. The best time is as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So an actor usually, quite rightly, will feel very stressed if they just have to have a coach on set that they've never met before and mm -hmm. get a note. You yes. Know? <laughs> <laughs> that fortunately doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. um, so ideally in pre-production or even before, sometimes I have actors contact me before pre-production starts and say, I know that I, I really want to have this down. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic because they can really get the nuts and bolts of it and rehearse it and run it, find out what might be their difficulty or if, mm -hmm. there, if there are any difficulties. And then by the time they get to set, it's if I'm there, it's really just for small things to remind them of don't forget that or it's right. really very fine tuning so it's mm. not stressful at all so the earlier the better the earlier the better and so then um, therefore yourself the actor and the director has a quite a close relationship then yes yeah, yeah that's the idea so that there's usually just my relationship starts very early with the actor so by the time they get to set it's a really easy process and hopefully they won't hear from me at all on yeah. the day <laughs> Just disappear in the you shadows. Did it. Yeah, <laughs> well done. that's right. But Fantastic. that all the hard work, preferably, is done. You know, one on one, both even before rehearsals, mm -hmm. and then seeing how it goes in rehearsals, and then 
taking it from there on to set. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, Jenny, thank you for joining us here on Bite Size Pictures. It's been really interesting having you here. Thank you. Not a problem. <laughs>